Before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to Venny Dorgis for the awesome fan art that you saw at the beginning of the video. If you have any fan art or fan work you would like me to show on my channel, hit me up. I'll leave links in the description below on how to contact me. Can't wait to see how you get creative and, most importantly, how you dive into imagination. Hey guys, Epsi here. Today I want to talk about Hero Kantare. I hope I'm saying the name of that game right. It's a fun game that I ran into recently that I feel like isn't getting enough attention. Well, to be honest, this isn't the first time I ran into this game. I remember running into it maybe a couple months ago when they were announcing that the game was coming out, you know, when you could pre-register. And I saw the screenshots and I, I felt like it looked a little clickbaity. Like, you know when you see in the app store, when you see a game and they show you all these crazy visuals, like they, they blow up the size of the characters, they put all these big words, etc. But then when you get into the game, it's just like, oh, build a couple buildings or just click and drag this or whatever. And it's just very, very like, different gameplay than what they show in the screenshots well oddly enough this game actually delivers on that and i'll get a little bit more into depth about it one of the first things you start noticing as soon as you log into the game is they use a lot of live 2d i'll be honest i'm not a big fan of live 2d too much because i feel like some games tend to overuse it instead of just like using it for certain things here and there and this game can be one of those at times and if I had to like kind of put my finger on where this is very sim like what this is very similar to, I would say this is extremely similar to like how Destiny Child uses their live TV. And it's one of the things that makes me not like the game too much. Yeah, like that game is heavy waifu like based and you know I love my waifus, but <laughs> like if they toned it back just a little bit, I feel like it would really help sell the artwork a lot more, you know, because like I said, I feel like the live 2D just can be a little distracting at times. The next thing you notice is they use like this comic book panel style of storytelling, but they also go to text from time to time. It, it jumps back and forth. Um, I do feel like the comic book panels and the text sometimes goes a little too fast, but you can pause at the top right corner of the screen. Um, but I didn't even know about this until I like asked in chat and somebody had to tell me, but that's another point that I'll get into in a bit. But um, just to say first and foremost, this game is littered with tons of story. And what I didn't know about this game is that there's this thing called Webtoons. I've been seeing ads about it, like left and right on YouTube. And they're like, you know how you see sometimes like, they'll show like a weird manga clip of something and they'll say, oh, you can go read this here. This game is apparently based on a whole universe of all those kind of like stories all mashed into one. And one of those stories, from what I've learned, has actually been turned into an anime called Tower of God. I still have yet to see that, but those characters are in this game as well. So if you are into any of those stories or you like Tower of God, then definitely take a look at this because you might be very interested to see some of the characters from that or from those stories in here. But here was the one thing that finally pulled me into this game and made me decide to actually give this a full chance. There are a lot of animated scenes and ultimates that you can use in this game. Kind of like how Epic 7 has them when you get to your 5 stars and your 4 stars and or maybe a couple other games. Keep in mind, for those ultimates, it's not like how in Epic 7 it's straight out the gate you have them. You have to unlock them through a skill tree of some sort. Now to kind of step away from like the way the game looks and whatnot, let's talk about what you're hit with when you get to the home screen. First thing you see is, in my opinion, a bit of a loud UI. But when you click on story, after you finish the little bits of tutorial, you'll notice that your characters are kind of sitting there and fighting on their own. This was really interesting. They decided to go with a idle style gameplay format for how you get resources. And while I know that idle style gameplay isn't really new or innovative, what makes it different is that that's not the only way you can play this game. At the bottom of that screen, you'll see a flashing button that says battle. When you click on it, you go in, you actually get to control your characters with this unique kind of card stacking system. And it's not just that you click one card or you click two cards and the more cards you stack, the more damage you do. The amount of cards you use actually determine what skills you use. And something that they don't really show too much, but they kind of bring it up later, but you're gonna gloss over this. It happened to me and it happened to a few other people. This uses up mana. The mana gauge is found at the bottom left of the screen. And depending on how many cards you stack on top of each other will depend on how much mana you're gonna use for that turn. And then once you're done, you click ready and then the whole battle plays out for that turn. Now with this unique combination of idle style gameplay and the card battle system that you saw, what this allows you to do is it helps you progress through the game a lot easier in terms of the story mode because those resources that you get when you're idle, you use to level up your characters. And then you actually level up your player level with that as well. And because of this, in a sense, generous combination, 
you don't have to worry about getting like level stuck or having to grind for resources to go and level up your characters or whatever. You can actually just let your game auto in the background and then once you've accumulated enough resources, you can go back and use them to get your character up. Like for example, I was trying to level up this character that I got through the storyline named White and I was just, I already had like level 60 characters and I wanted to get him up there with them because I kind of like the way he, you know, attacks and stuff like that. So because of that, all I had to do was just put him in the party and then as I was doing the story and whatnot, letting the team kind of carry him, once I was ready to just kind of push more levels into him, I can just hit the claim button at the top and just dump those resources into him. And if it wasn't enough, just wait maybe an hour or two and just continue to do the same thing, rinse and repeat until he was level 60. I kind of wish other mobile games did this because like you don't know how many times I was trying to level up a character in said game, but I needed the stamina to go and do a certain stage while I was trying to take care of an event on a certain day because the resources that I needed were only available on certain days and I'd have to kind of, for lack of better wording, juggle how I was going to do it. That got really annoying. So not having to stress about who I wanted to level and how I wanted to level and basically allowing my characters to passively level up along with me, that's quite a breath of fresh air. Next we'll talk about kind of the elephant in the room, the gotcha system that they use. Every single banner that's in this game, the first pull is absolutely free. And then there's also a banner that you can pull three times a day for free, but I don't think I've seen any characters come out of it. Not that I know of, I think you just get shot. But going back to what I was saying about the other banners, when you click on them, you'll get the free pull, but there's gonna be something that's gonna be a little confusing. You're going to see these orbs just kind of sit there, the things that you pulled, and you're probably wondering how you claimed them. They're already claimed, but they do that, I guess, as a means to show you what your last pull was before you go to pull again, if you're looking to pull. And then at that point, it's just to use your currency. Now, a funny thing about that currency that you can use, or one of the currencies that you can use, the gems, you don't have to necessarily pay for them. In one of the shops, I'm still trying to memorize everything with the shops because once again, it's a bit confusing. I'm gonna get to that point really soon, I promise. Um, you can actually buy those gems with in-game currency. Yeah, you can only do it once a day and it's a little hefty, the amount of currency you need to use, but that's one of those resources that you can passively grind out in the idle system. But before I go any further, let me talk about the one thing that I kept bringing up from time to time during this video. This game can be awfully confusing in terms of like how you go about doing things because this game doesn't really express or explain things too well. Like I just mentioned with the gotcha, how when you do a pull, the last pull you've done sits in these on that screen and it doesn't tell you, hey, you claimed this. You have to kind of go and realize it for yourself. Or the fact that like when you get relics, they don't really tell you exactly what a relic is. You kind of need to stumble upon it yourself to notice it. Or even the fact that like when you're doing the idle thing and you see those little bouncy chests in the back, you have to click them. And even the shop itself, like if you're a free to play player and you are playing, you're most likely not gonna touch the shop too much because you're not looking to really spend or anything of the sort. But there's a lot of missions in there that you can clear that gives you free resources. Or the fact that they actually give you free gems in the store when you go in there and you click on a certain gem that you see in the corner. And let me not, you know, get started on where, how there's like, nine different stories in the game and they're all scattered about some of them you have to go into world mode to find some of them you have to go into the store to find some of them you have to go into the portal or the gotcha to find and whatnot it's just very all over the place and it's even though it's not really overwhelming it's just it makes you say like wow how did i not know this ahead of time and now that i didn't click these gems every day i probably missed out a whole bunch of gems like, I really wish they kind of cleaned that up and kind of unified all these things. Like, make a mission tab where you can find all those missions all in one spot. Make a place where you get your free resources, like the gems or whatever, all in one spot and whatnot. You know, when the chest is bouncing, you know, make it kind of, like, circle in on it and dim out everything else to let players know, hey, you can click on this. You know, the first time around only. And stuff like that. Or even the quick city search. You can click on that and the first time it costs currency and the second time it costs gems or whatnot. But you won't know what that is unless you bother to click on it yourself and find out. I really think they really need to work on this one aspect the most. On, on top of like maybe the English, but this is the one thing I feel like really, really, really needs attention. So those are the main points that I really wanted to hit on with this game. Um, if this sounds interesting to you, definitely give it a shot. And if you do, the one tip I can give you is when you get to the home screen, click on the gear that you see in the top right, 
click on account settings and then click redemption code and type in welcome hero. I think you have to do it in all caps, no spaces, no nothing, just all caps, one word, welcome hero. And you'll get a bunch of resources that you can use to you know, help you out on your journey. Um, I, I had to find out about that like through Reddit or something. It just, you know, I didn't see anywhere else to find this. So I thought I'd let you know, just so you don't have to miss out on this either, just in case there's a time limit or something of the sort. Like I said, I do think this is a really good game and it's a little underrated, for lack of better wording. Um, it makes it a really great secondary game because of the idle aspects and everything that I mentioned, or a good primary game if you just don't know what else to play. If you really hate Live 2D or you're not a fan of like loud UI or you don't want a game that's kind of like, you have to kind of sift through the mud to figure out what you're supposed to do, this might not be your type of game. Yeah, outside of games like Arknights or whatever, I'd say this is a good game to put your time into, like if you're out of sanity or you just want another game to pass the time until your sanity refills or something of the sort. But if you made it this far and this seems like something that's up your alley, leave a like, you know, let me know in the comments section, you know, what you get in some of your roles or, you know, what you think of the game so far. If you don't, leave a dislike, tell me what really bothers you about the game, what you wish they did differently, or what you wish they didn't do at all. Thanks for watching, and most importantly, be safe, have fun, dive into imagination. Catch you guys later.